race starts. I'm going to talk through the routine that I use that helps me get the starts. So from the garage, you've only got a couple of minutes before that pit lane closes. You've got to remember, get out there before it closes. Around on that first lap, I make sure I've cleaned those tyres off on those long turns, like I've explained in uh, scrubbing in tyres. So I use those long corners, get the tire, heat in the tyres, scrub them in both sides, and going reasonably quick. So they're pretty clean by the time I roll up on the grid. Don't forget that you've got to roll up on the grid. Don't go whizzing through. I've seen it before, World Championship. Someone tear through a grid and people get injured. So a roll up on the grid and you should know your position, you know? That takes the stress out of arriving there. You know, what, what row and what number you're on. And then I pull up there you know, with your mechanic who's got the stands, whatever, and uh, warm as if that's what you're gonna do. And your hot boyfriend or girlfriend's there with an umbrella. And Basically, you've got a few minutes to relax, have a sip on a drink, and think about your next steps that you're gonna that you're gonna do. And they are, for example, you'll get a warning. There's a few minutes to go, and warmers and stands have got to come out. Beautiful other half's got to wander off. Mechanics leave, and this next bit, the bike's running, and there's a few different championships that use different uh, routines on this, but common one is someone with flags will walk through each row and let each row one by one off because it's a little safer and uh, when you set off on your warm-up lap you know you set off that I, I do my best not to fry or heat the clutch too much on that initial start but at the same time you've got to get away quickly as ca quick as you can without uh, doing a race start and heating the clutch so I launch down to the first corner and this is the first of the very important points. As you get down to that first corner, it's your only chance to have a practice at your braking marker for turn one because it's going to be completely different than the one you use when you're getting a, having a flying lap during the race or during practice. So I take a note of where my, I get off the line as fast as I can and accelerate towards the first turn as fast as I can and look at my usual brake marker, but I know I can go past it. So it's a bit of a guess, but I go, I go, one, I go past it, I go one, two, now. Brake towards the corner like I'm braking as well, like I will in the race, towards the corner, and then, I, then you know from that one experience whether that marker that you used is a little bit, excuse me, late or early, and you can adjust it you know, calculate from there. You've got a good idea now where to brake for the first turn. Then on the warm-up lap, I push quite hard, you know. I keep into, uh, I take into account that I've only done one lap on those tyres, but I push hard because it's practice for that first lap of the race. And I'm, I'm going through there. And one thing to watch towards the end of that lap is someone in front of you shutting off early because they don't want to get to the grid too early. I've seen it before where someone hits the back of someone else. Um, I think basically I try to keep going as fast as I can till towards the end of that lap I don't just shut off I put my leg out to let in case there's someone behind me let them know that I'm going to start rolling off I gently start slowing down roll around the last turn I can see the grid there I'm rolling up as I'm still rolling I hook it into neutral well before it slowed down because it's a nightmare if you arrive at the grid and you can't get it into neutral once you've stopped. I think we've all experienced that and you've got to sit there for a long, long time with the clutch and trying to nightmare. So while it's still rolling, I click neutral and just roll up with it idling. And uh, then you've got a moment to have a look around and make sure, how, basically calculate how long you've got before everybody's there and ready. And so there's no point sitting there stressed until the, uh, you're under starter's orders. Have a look around and go, it's looking pretty close to ready. Then the guy in front of the grid with the flags, he'll be there. Once he raises his flag, you know it's pretty close to the start of the race. So then you can hook it in, you know, pull the clutch in, hook it in gear. I sit right forward. I put literally my chest on the tank. My, I start with two feet down and I put as much weight on the bike and forward as I can to stop trying to help that wheelie and um, help stop the wheeling. 
And so I've got the clutch in, the guy's off going off the grid. I wind it up a little bit and I just find where the clutch will start to grab, to, you know, and pull it back in off there because you don't want to try and guess where it's going to jump. You want it to the point where another millimetre or two and it's going. So I hold it there, I wind the RPM up once he's gone off the grid, wind the RPM up to a couple of grand off the red. I know that the twins use a lower RPM, use torque, but the Maltese you're only a couple of grand off, off the red line. And so I hold it there, whether it's blipping it or holding it constant, doesn't matter. Then when that red light comes on, you know it can go any moment. You know, you're fully ready, ready to go. You're watching it. You're kind of looking past it, peripheral vision, looking past it down the track. When that light goes off, it's go. And so I, this is another really important point. When you the RPM's up, when you go initially let that clutch out and it launches, it's only a little bit that moves out and you want it to go forward as fast as you can, but you don't want the engine to bog. So it's launched, the front wheel's literally hovering. By having two legs down, the, the, the way I prefer, it hovers and it goes straight because you've balanced it. Having one leg down, like the shorter guys need to do, and or some people prefer, um, you've got to remember, you've got to compensate for that weight by using your upper body a little bit to the left. You watch the shorter World Championship guys, uh, when they start one leg down, they, they're, they're good at it obviously, but when they launch it and it's hovering, they're using their head to balance that one leg out there, so it hovers straight. Um, you've got plenty of time to hook second gear, don't worry about that, because first gear is 160Ks, 140Ks, something like this, almost 100 mile an hour. So it's launched off there. The big, big risk is when people start, you can't hear your own engine. When people start, if somebody's got a better start than you, there's a massive desire to let that clutch out further and further because you want to beat them. But all that does is make the engine bog. So you've got to focus on, the, what I use is, it's like cramp in your hand. You go, the initial rah, jump, it's hovering. Do not let your hand move out any further until that first gear's run out. And that way, you're better off over revving the bike a little bit than bogging the engine. So, it's at a constant RPM, constant slip, and it's launching forward as fast as it can. Once that gear runs out of speed and you can let it all out, all it's easy from there, you're just hooking gears. One, bit, another very important safety uh, issue is you have to have a clear line of sight. For example, Imagine if, the, if you're three rows back and the guy on the front has stalled his bike. The one in front of you, you haven't got a clear line of sight, he swerves and you go straight in the back of someone who stopped. You know, a total nightmare. So always have a clear line of sight all the way down to turn one, you know. And then we're launching forward down to the first corner and then hopefully you've judged pretty accurately your braking marker and you get a great first turn. Another little tip for the people watching this video is I try to get in my routine, the way I ride that lap using all my markers as soon as I can, you know, from, from first lap. Because if you're concentrating on what the person in front of you is doing, you're not concentrating on your best lap. So, and the best way to make them come back towards you is do everything the best you know how to.